So, uh, good morning, Minglava, and yes, you. So, uh, we can do uh, uh, this at a session, you share cooperation and uh, development, you share cooperation and development session. So, international and a conference on development and regional cooperation. Uh, I am Dr. Tong. Uh, I am the writer and uh, from the uh, Metila University of Economics. I will be serving uh, as uh, your moderator today. Okay. Uh, so uh, this session, uh, this session, we have the, the uh, four paper, uh, four presentation. Uh, the first one is me, uh, challenges of online teaching in Metila University of Economics during the COVID-19 pandemic. Second presentation is analysis of public debt implication for economy growth rate of Myanmar. Uh, this will be presented by Dr. Tita Tu, my pro writer of the Metila University of Economics. Uh, the third presentation is uh, effect of capacity building and manager support on employee performance uh, by uh, Professor Dr. Kimala Lamar, uh, Professor from the Metila University of Economics. Uh, last but not the least, uh, the last one is uh, challenges and hindering stressors of employees in banking industry in Myanmar. Uh, this is this way we be presented by the Dr. Professor Dr. Jijita, uh, Professor from the uh, Metila University of Economics. So, uh, uh, in my general impression, uh, these uh, four presentations are very timely and very impressive uh, presentation. Uh, However, here I like to uh, request and apologize uh, because uh, me and uh, pro writer Dauda Tita Tu uh, have had to attend the uh, VIP meeting. Uh, that's why. Uh, that's why uh, we. Uh, that's why. Uh, uh, you will see, uh, you will see the uh, pre-recorded and uh, a presentation uh, uh, on via of uh, uh, Mead and Professor Dauda Tita too. So uh, the first one is the uh, uh, challenges of online teaching in Media University of Economics uh, during the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So. Uh, uh, I, I, I have attended the pre-recorded uh, video, uh, so I, I do apologize uh, not to uh, uh, deliver the uh, lecture because of the VIV meeting, uh, that's why. So you, you, you will, uh, you will see the pre-recorded uh, video. As uh, this morning, uh, I have I, I have the uh, important meeting, so that's why. Uh, so, uh, I not present at uh, impact video. Okay. Morning, everybody. Okay. I will present uh, my study uh, before <laughs> presentation. May I introduce myself? I am Dr. Yeah. Toong, writer of Metila University of Economics, Myanmar. Uh, today, I will present uh, the topic 
challenges of online teaching in my university uh, during COVID-19 oh. uh, pandemic. Oh, so let me uh, share the screen. So my topic is challenges of online teaching in Matila University of Economy during the COVID-19 pandemic. My presentation, they are for this portion. So the first is introduction, second is background, the third is objective of the study, food is research methodology, the fifth is result of this study and conclusion. So as you know, uh, the COVID-19 coronavirus 2019 pandemic has caused many challenges in the global education sector. Most countries temporarily close education institution in an attempt to contain the spread of the bias and reduce inflation. Close down of education institution about the provision of essential services to children and community. And COVID-19 pandemic has created the largest regression of education system in all countries. Myanmar as well. Learning losses threaten to extend beyond this generation and erase decades of progress. The education disruption has had and will continue to have substantial effect beyond education. So as per crowd, may I uh, introduce of my university, Maitila University of Economics, MEUE. Uh, it is situated in the central part of the Myanmar and established in 2001. So some people know that uh, this place is a very nice other place uh, because uh, very near to Mandalay and Bekan. Mandalay and Bekan is the historic other places in uh, Myanmar. So my university is uh, one of the uh, three economics university in Myanmar. There are five major department and four supporting department in my university. Major departments are economics, statistics, commerce, applied economics and management, study development. Supporting development are English, Myanmar language, geography, and mathematics. My university offer seven bachelor degrees, five master degrees, and three doctoral degrees. In addition, my university has three campuses, Maitila campus, Nevido campus, and Mandalay campus. So as the result of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, on March 23rd, 2020, all classes of all the university had been closed temporarily and the student went back to their home. My university reopened the classes for final years of bachelor degree, master degree, and PhD degree from 9 May 2021 to June 27, 2021. However, because of that with or COVID-19, it cannot continue the classes and close again. My university trying to reopen the classes by using online teaching for the sake of getting the opportunity of continuous learning and developing the very well human resources for the country. That it will take time to prepare to teach uh, because the situation are very different from the uh, 
uh, university from developed countries. You know, my country is the uh, developing country. Uh, my university is the government owned university. So uh, now ready to uh, teach uh, online teaching um, uh, to the other student. At the meantime, there are not enough internet infrastructure and faculty member are weak in uh, IT skill and there are limited budget to spend for online teaching. However, we try to reopen uh, the classes by conducting various training concerning with IT and teaching methodology. Modifying the curricula and syllabus by upgrading the internet accessibility, providing infrastructure in order to meet the requirement of online teaching. The university study online classes for all master degrees under the Human Resource Development Program of June 2021. It means that the university transform from physical face-to-face -face, uh, teaching to online teaching. After ending the first quarter of a uh, program, we were from a uh, student collected by using structure questionnaire. Uh, this is the objective of the study. So the main objective of the study is to explore the challenges of online teaching program or Metila University of Economies, MEUE. So, you know, uh, my university is the government owned university in developing country. Uh, so we face many problems and many other challenges uh, to teach online uh, to uh, students. Uh, so uh, we want to explore the challenges of online teaching program at my university. As the research methodology, the study is decreed research using structure questionnaire survey and conducted uh, during first week of September 2021. The questionnaire are distributed to the 414 postgraduate a student board in Metila and Navy Dog campuses using online media, that's me, Microsoft Office 365. So this uh, table uh, show the distribution of postgraduate and a student. So you can see the uh, MBA, MBA, MBF, uh, MDS, master program, altogether 414 other students. In question uh, it consists of three sessions. Uh, the first is the uh, demographic profile of student. The session two is a, a student perception of online teaching and learning. Session three is uh, challenges to online teaching and student suggestion for modifying this postgraduate program. However, are it was able to get response from 396 out of 414 postgraduates and a student. 18 students do not have any response to the question. So this session is result of the LS study. So uh, uh, in demographic profile of a student, uh, it can be seen in the following table too. So uh, when we had a study, uh, this TBA. So female is 64% uh, of the population and male is only 36% of the population. So female are the most at uh, student. As uh, this TBA show the distribution of student by age. So uh, the most students are between uh, 31 and 40 and 40 and uh, 50 years old. So nine buses are uh, greater than 51 students. This debate show the academic year of student 
Fasia 80% are population are Fasia and 82% are at the second year. So there are four program, MBA program, MBA program, MBA program, MDS program. So MBA program is the largest population. And when we study the, uh, this at the table, you can see that uh, so we can collect the uh, data uh, student from uh, Nibidot and Metila. Mendeley, uh, we cannot uh, open the Mendeley campus. So in general, uh, most of the study in female, majority of study include in the 31 and 40 and 41 and 50 each group who are 300 or student with enough technical experience from online learning. However, 9% of students are over 50 years old. So this session, as I mentioned, the student preferences or learning method. So regarding this other method, and most of the students prefer online learning to lecture. So we can see in this LTV, 7% uh, of students uh, prefer the zone lecture rather than pre-recorded video and physics learning. So pre-recorded video uh, method is the least, uh, the smallest like, number of other students prefer. So it can be interpreted that the university may arrange plenty of teaching and learning approach through zone application and physical attachment according to the COVID-19 rule and regulation. So we try to, uh, we try to contact, we try to teach uh, under the COVID-19 rule and regulation by using planted teaching. Uh, this is the capacity to learning and a facility. So when we see, when, when we see uh, the student familiarity or learning to. So most students uh, familiar along with this own application. So Microsoft Team uh, is the smallest and a portion. Uh, you can see in this table. So as a, a student learning devices, most students are used a laptop computer. The smallest LS student are used a desktop or a computer. So the rest are using a tablet phone and handphone. So this session is mentioned uh, by session on the online teaching and learning activity. So here we can categorize into three parts. Uh, the first is the digital teaching and learning facility. Second one is the uh, student difficulty uh, suggestion. A uh, student position or digital uh, teaching and learning uh, facility. So most student answer, uh, it is the domain and easy. So not easy and very difficult is very small and a student answer. In case of condition or uh, network connection during a uh, weekend lecture hour. So here I like to mention, so uh, our university at a UCD are a weekend lecture uh, because most students are government official and uh, managerial uh, position uh, in the private university. So uh, we did, uh, during the weekday, uh, they have to work. Uh, that's why uh, our class room uh, arranged uh, during the weekend. So uh, during the weekend, internet network and uh, connection is normal. Most students answer the uh, connection is normal. So very small, and uh, the student answer the uh, 
very slow, uh, very fast. <clears throat> so this is a Pasashi also lecture. Uh, so most student answer a zone lecture is suitable for them. They agree. And then this and portion of the study strongly disagree and disagree. So uh, most students uh, prefer the zone lecture and suitable uh, to do the uh, zone lecture. Quality of vision and perception. So the answer, uh, it is the clear position. So we can see according to the about TV 10, 11, 12, 13, student perception on digital teaching and learning facility are good and agreeable condition. So uh, here. Uh, the most important point of the my study uh, is the challenges of online learning. So as I explained earlier that, so we face many problems and challenges. There are many problems, there are many challenges uh, in contacting the online teaching and learning. So the problem concerning the student online learning, uh, poor network collection, lack of own computer laptop, lack of Zoom application in the laptop, poor voice at a condition or laptop, electricity break off during the lecture time, and, and, and familiar with software application for the online learning and can be seen in the following table 14. So uh, knowing the student problem in online teaching, uh, we can arrange the uh, teaching plan and support student learning activity in terms of the creating IT facility. So we can see the many problems uh, concerning the online, online teaching. So here, for the percent of the student answer the problem of electricity break off during the lecture time. For the percent of the student are learning from Nebito campus, it may need to suggest a regional authority to go to electricity infrastructure. 31 percent of the student face with a poor network connection. Every agree concern with the IT infrastructure. So this is concern with the uh, student suggestion and comment. So some students who want to continue learning are happy to stay in their uh, online arrangement. So uh, they, they prefer uh, to study by online uh, teaching, online teaching and method, rather than the face-to-face -face, uh, classroom method. However, students give negative comment because of political crisis, COVID-19 crisis, who are internet connection and, and motivated participation. Uh, it can be shown in the DB15. So I worry you cannot uh, see clearly. <clears throat> Generally, uh, there is any problem with faculty member and it seems to satisfy with the performance or lecture itself, some point it is just general problem. Some student have no answer for uh, this at a student connection the faculty member. In conclusion, our university, Metila University of Economics, perform uh, the uh, study of online learning in order to improve effective teaching and learning quality. According to the student response, most of the students agree with the zone lecture and uh, uh, familiar with the zone application. Only few students learn with the play and handphone. Majority of the students agree with university online teaching approach using zone application. No comment to 
uh, modify the postgraduate program. So, so uh, we have to prop on our program. No comment to modify, no problem with the faculty member and HR. However, it is necessary to await or send we by a university site. For example, university need to introduce uh, online application too for teaching and learning uh, to both teacher and student. And then all postgraduate program need to have one and uni uniform online application software or exam. And an important point is it need to uh, arrange plan B for student option during the exam time. Because sometimes uh, electricity break off a poor and network connection during the exam, exam time. University need to recognize the naked team and keep in touch with each uh, program faculty member as well as the student group leader. Uh, concerning with the IT infrastructure, who are nowhere connection and street bring on. Uh, student are distributed in the whole area of Myanmar in concern with the governance or governing authority and condition. Uh, the university have to discuss this uh, obstacle to the higher education body. In conclusion, this study may contribute uh, to university accrediting online teaching and learning abroad, especially for postgraduate uh, program. So, thank you very much. Kasamita. Um, excuse me, can, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Sorry uh, for our uh, right to our chairperson. Yeah, here's a, an important meeting now. That is why uh, next uh, presenter, uh, me, I will present uh, my paper. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to introduce uh, myself and uh, everyone who attend the conference and our chairpersons. Uh, a very good morning. Uh, my name is Kemal Ma, uh, professor from the Department of Commerce, Maitila University of Economics. Uh, today, I would like to present my, uh, about my research paper, which is uh, effect of capacity buildings and manager supports on employee performance, the mediating roots of job satisfaction. In my presentations, there are six parts, introduction, literature review, research method methods, analysis and results, pioneer recommendations, limitation need for further research. As the first part, uh, which is the introduction. In today's competitive uh, workplace and a very strong competition among the organizations, organizations compete in them of knowledge, skills, abilities of human resources. It means that uh, the knowledge, skills and abilities of uh, human resources of the organization is the key uh, uh, to perform their organizations and to gain the success. Without the excellent human resources, the survival of the organization will be a question. Creating job satisfaction of employees is a key to gain high performance. It means that without job satisfaction, the high performance of individuals and also the performance of whole organizations cannot be seen. To upgrade the job satisfactions and the performance of employees, building employee capacities and supports of managers are essential requirements. Many previous study pointed out uh, these two factors, which are uh, important uh, to be created in the organizations. According to GOPSI 2012, capacity Rebuilding is a process of strengthening the abilities of employees, organizations, and systems to perform their core duties and continues to improve and develop over time. That is why this study mainly focuses on the capacity buildings and supports of managers uh, considered as an essential factor for uh, employee job satisfaction and uh, employee performance. There are three main objectives in these studies. One is the effect, uh, to analyze the effects of capacity buildings and manager supports on job satisfaction and employee performance. 
The second one is the effect of job satisfaction on employee performance. And the third one is the mediating effect of job satisfaction in the relationship between capacity building, manager supports, and employee performance. This part is the literature review. In this part, there are two main independence variables in my study. The first one is capacity build. Capacity building is defined as the development of knowledge, attitude, skills of the workforce or employees for enhancing their abilities to attract, uh, to achieve the short-term and long-term goals for both organizations and individual levels. Uh, that is why uh, the organization need to consider how to build the capacities of employees. The second variable is manager supports. Employees expect support from their managers, which create positive attitudes in their work and positive attitude towards their organizations. It means that the employee expects uh, uh, the uh, care or uh, the suggestions, uh, commands, or any other uh, activities such as knowledge sharing activities from, the, uh, from their managers. This is very important for employees. One of the dependence variable is job satisfaction. Employee job satisfaction is derived from the mental and physical satisfaction related to their work environments. And these satisfied employees determine the quality of the services provided to the customers. It means that the satisfied customer, the uh, services of satisfied customer is very excellent. Uh, that is why job satisfaction is a positive feeling about the uh, job resulting from the evaluations of its characteristics. Uh, that is why job satisfaction is focused in these studies. The expected outcome of this study is employee performance. Performance is usually defined as the extent to which an organizational member contributes to achieving the goals of their organizations. And also the achievement of any business organization mainly depends on the employee performance, which is determined whether employee perform his or her tasks effectively or not. Uh, the performance of employees is excellent. The whole perf uh, performance of the organizations is also excellent. That is why the individual performance of employees is essential uh, for the success of the organization. Based on the previous studies and uh, theoretical uh, conditions, uh, there are uh, six hypotheses in this study. Uh, the first two are based on the capacity building. The second uh, and uh, the third and fourth uh, hypothesis are uh, based on the manager support. Uh, the fifth hypothesis is job satisfaction and direct effects on employee performance at the sixth. Hypothesis is job satisfaction mediate the relationship between capacity building, manager support, and employee performance. To test the hypothesis, this part is the research methods and key respondents. This study mainly used the structure questionnaire to collect the primary data. 370 non managerial employees that are gone off, uh, were the target populations of the study, uh, which are the from, uh, employees from the Yango Electricity Supply Corporation in Myanmar. According to Crisis and Morgan 1970, there requires sample size of 190. The 190 structure questionnaires were distributed, and 143 complete sets of questionnaires were included in the final analysis. This is the analytical juice. This study mainly used the multiple regression analysis as the main analytical tool to test the proposed hypothesis of this study. This is the uh, part, this part is the uh, result of the analysis. Uh, this table shows the uh, mean value reliability uh, of the variables. According to the results, uh, the employees perceive that the capacity ability and manager supports uh, are provided by their organization, which mean values is uh, more than 4.3, uh, strongly agree levels of the employees, according to best 1977. All, mean va all variables show the strongly agree levels of the uh, respondents. That is why uh, the employees really satisfy and their performance of the employees is at, at, uh, at the excellent conditions. The alpha values is greater than 0 0.70. That is why it is under the acceptable level. The next table is um, uh, the results of the multiple regression analysis. According to uh, Barron, Kenny, 1986, 
uh, I tested the median effect of uh, job satisfaction. This is the final uh, analysis of regression uh, tables. According to this table, capacity building uh, at, uh, direct effects on job satisfaction and also affects all uh, employee performance. Uh, that is why capacity building is a uh, 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 job satisfaction is a, a partial mediating for capacity building, uh, but uh, job satisfaction is a full mediator for manager supports because uh, manager supports have direct effects on job satisfaction, but manager support has no direct effects on employee performance. That are now one job satisfaction enter into the multiple regression analysis. Based on the results of the regression analysis, the findings and recommendation parts are presented. The correlation result will be that the positive correlations are capacity buildings and manager supports with job satisfaction and employee performance. Manager supports a stronger correlation with job satisfaction than capacity buildings. It means that manager supports is more important for employees to create their satisfaction. That's, that's why manager play an essential role for employees and their supports is a source of employees' job satisfaction. This study also explored the strong correlation between capacity buildings and employee performance, uh, then uh, manager supports and employee performance. That is why it is very important. These two factors are very important for employee uh, job satisfaction. Capacity buildings and manager support have positive and significant effects on job satisfaction and employee performance. That is why these two factors create benefits for these corporations uh, as employee job satisfaction and high performance levels for employees. Because of practicing these capacity buildings and manager supports, uh, the corporations can yield job satisfaction and high performance levels for employees. Interesting the mediating effect of job satisfaction. Job satisfaction partially mediated the relationship between capacity buildings and employee performance. Uh, it means that uh, job satisfaction uh, is essential for uh, employee performance, but also uh, capacity building is important for employee performance. On the other hand, job satisfaction fully mediated the relationship between manager support and employee performance. It means that without job satisfaction, manager support alone cannot create performance or employees directly. That's why the manager uh, should put more emphasis on the way to provide the best support to yield performance of employee through job satisfaction. The corporation should focus more not only on capacity buildings and manager supports, but also on other factors that can create job satisfaction. Uh, 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 there are some limitations of these studies. Uh, in this study, the the scope of the study is Django Electricity Supply Corporations in Myanmar. Other corporations uh, were not tested in, the, uh, in these studies. The study also analyzed the effects of capacity buildings and manager support on job satisfaction and employee performance. It means that this study mainly focused on two independent variables. According to previous studies, there are many factors that can create job satisfaction and employee performance. That's why further research should explore the importance of other factors on job satisfaction, employee performance in this corporation and also other organizations in Myanmar. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to get the comments and questions. Thank you very much. Uh, our rector, uh, he has a meeting. That is why uh, I think uh, another uh, other presenter, Dr. Chichi Tan, she will present her paper. So thank you very much. Okay, now uh, first, uh, Dr. Chichi Tan's presentation, and we skipped the second presentation. So. First, Dr. Kiki Tan have have take a, take a presentation, and then we uh, look at the uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Dida Chu uh, presentation. Okay. Uh,
Yeah, actually, um, yeah. <laughs> the GSC, uh, can present uh, through pre-recorded video uh, at the end of this section. Yeah, okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay, you can go on. Well, <laughs> so, uh, okay. okay, thank you. Um, well, let me present my presentation. Well, uh, good morning, uh, professors, uh, organizing committee, and uh, researchers, and my colleague. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to present uh, here uh, in the International Conference on Development and Regional Cooperation. Um, well, uh, today I'm going to present my research uh, concerning with challenge and hindering stresses of employees in the banking industry in Myanmar. Here, uh, I'm going to present uh, with six main parts, including uh, uh, an introduction objectives of the study, the scope and methods of the study, conceptual framework, results and conclusion. Uh, well, uh, let me introduce uh, my study area. Uh, as I mentioned before in, in my topic, uh, I uh, emphasize uh, both challenge and hindering stresses. Uh, why these are important? Uh, actually, uh, nowadays, uh, employees uh, confront stresses in the risky work environment uh, because it's very risky uh, and, uh, today. And then, uh, uh, and especially in human service organizations. Then, uh, especially in the banking industry, employees uh, make contact uh, directly with customers, uh, even though uh, there is the increased utilization of electronic banking system in Myanmar. Uh, but uh, still, customers are using, uh, customers are coming to the bank uh, daily. That's why um, uh, employees uh, have to contact them frequently. Uh, in that case, uh, they feel that colleagues, customers, and other state, uh, external stakeholders. Uh, in that case, uh, they feel stress and uh, they perceive their work is very challenging. So uh, right now, they encounter external pressures, uh, uh, let's say, uh, from the public and uh, spread of coronavirus disease and fluctuated uh, fluctuation in organizational practices and customers changing perspective on banks. Uh, uh, to, uh, to prevent the uh, coronavirus disease, uh, the uh, banks uh, lessen the number of employees uh, to do the requirements of social distancing. In that case, uh, they might have uh, work uh, over workload uh, during the time constraints. Then, in addition, uh, they have to wear severe outfits to protect the disease. Uh, it makes them to be inconvenient. So they perceive, uh, but but some uh, employees uh, perceive it as an opportunity because uh, they like uh, to take challenge uh, by struggling the difficulties. Uh, so they, they perceive it as an opportunity. But others, uh, while others uh, perceive it as a threat. Uh, be, uh, because uh, 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 the, the, there are many uh, adverse consequences uh, from the uncontrollable hurdles. Well, um, based on uh, these concepts, uh, the study aims to examine the effects of challenge and hindering stresses on employee motivation in the banking industry and to analyze the effects of challenge and hindering stresses on burnout among employees in the banking industry in Myanmar. So to conduct uh, the study, uh, the, let, let me uh, present the study scope. Uh, here, as I mentioned before, that uh, the study emphasized uh, a focus on challenge and hindering stresses, uh, but um, most of the others uh, uh, discuss about uh, the stresses uh, from the negative viewpoints, but some more Others uh, discuss uh, from positive and negative viewpoints. Uh, they uh, assume that uh, some stresses uh, tend to positive consequences, uh, while others uh, tend to negative uh, outcomes. That's why uh, in this study, um, 
uh, 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 challenge and hindering stresses, uh, influence on employee motivation and burnout was investigated. Uh, to uh, conduct the analysis, uh, two or six respondents in the banking industry in Myanmar by using Google Form uh, during early October 2021 uh, to to collect the data, the structure questionnaire with five point like a scale was used uh, as the main analysis methods, uh, descriptive statistics, uh, correlation analysis, and multiple regression analysis uh, were applied in my study. Well, um, this is the conceptual framework which is mainly used in my study. Here, um, uh, you can see that uh, uh, I have uh, two independent variables, uh, challenge stresses and hindrance stresses. Uh, uh, the study assumes that uh, these stresses, uh, both stresses have uh, influence on applied motivation and also uh, burnout. So uh, based on the framework, uh, I conduct the analysis and let me show the results. Uh, firstly, um, uh, uh, here uh, the table shows the descriptive statistics uh, 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 by showing uh, overall mean value and standard deviation. As well, uh, here we can see that uh, the employees in the banking industries uh, suffer from challenge stressor at the neutral level, uh, at, uh, according to best uh, uh, 1977. However, the the standard deviation is more than when it uh, it might be that uh, uh, the respondents included in this study are at the uh, different hierarchical levels. Uh, that's why they might uh, face uh, different types of challenge stressors in their workplace. And then also uh, here, uh, uh, the similar uh, finding in uh, hindering stressors, uh, which shows uh, at the neutral level. Uh, then here, um, it, uh, interestingly, uh, employee motivation is uh, at the agreed level. Uh, so we can conclude that employees are motivated in their workplace to some extent, even though they have uh, many difficulties uh, during these days. Uh, then also uh, uh, here, Bernard uh, shows the neutral level uh, that uh, it, it shows that um, uh, the, the employees uh, suffer uh, from the burnout uh, to, to uh, some extent. Uh, here also the standard deviation is uh, more than one. That's why we can conclude that uh, the, the respondents are from the different levels. Uh, that's why different levels or different departments uh, or different uh, or maybe uh, from private or public uh, banks. Uh, that's why uh, they are uh, burnout level uh, might be different. That's why the standard deviation is uh, more than one. Then uh, let me continue to the correlation analysis. Uh, here, uh, uh, I will highlight uh, the correlation uh, uh, between challenge uh, stresses and employee motivation and also burnout. Here, uh, we can see that challenge stressor is negatively and significantly correlated with employee performance, uh, employee motivation, and also challenge stressor is, uh, stressors are, are negatively and uh, uh, significantly correlated with employee motivation. Then uh, we can uh, expect that uh, there is the potentiality uh, 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 the, uh, of the effects of challenge and hindrance stressors on employee motivation. Then here, uh, it uh, mentions that uh, the challenge stresses are positively and uh, uh, significantly correlated with burnout, and uh, likewise, uh, hindering stresses are also uh, positively and significantly correlated with burnout. Here, though, uh, that's why uh, we we can uh, boast that uh, these uh, challenge and hindering stresses have uh, influence on uh, burnout. Well, uh, to meet my study objective where here I conduct a multiple regression analysis of stresses and apply motivation. Uh, here, uh, as I mentioned that uh, uh, only one variable challenge stresses have a negative and significant effect on uh, employee motivation, but uh, hindrance stressor is not. Uh, so we can conclude that uh, challenge only challenge Stressor lead to employee motivation. Uh, the more 
uh, employees will uh, challenge stressors, uh, the, the, uh, the greater uh, they tend to uh, sorry, the, 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 the increase their motivation, uh, the decrease in their motivation. Then uh, to meet the second objective of my study, uh, here I conduct multiple regression analysis of stressors and burnouts. Here, as I mentioned in the table, uh, here these two variables uh, have positive and significant effect on applied uh, uh, burnouts. Uh, but uh, comparatively speaking, uh, challenge stressors has uh, more uh, 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 likely to uh, tend to uh, ban out uh, uh, than uh, hindering stressors. Well, uh, based on these findings, uh, I uh, uh, in the first uh, for the first objective, uh, we found that uh, challenge stressor have negative uh, uh, influence on applied motivation, but hindrance stressor is not significant. Uh, in analyzing the, uh, the effects on burnouts, uh, both uh, challenge and uh, hindrance stressors have uh, a significant influence on burnouts. Well, uh, let me conclude uh, my presentation uh, by study, uh, the, the, this study, uh, the findings of the study uh, gives the comprehensive high insights uh, for the effects of challenge and hindering stresses on employee motivation. It will contribute uh, the literature uh, concerning about stresses, uh, stresses, motivation and burnout. Uh, then uh, I would like to suggest the banks uh, that uh, they should, uh, they are responsible to alleviate stresses in order to generate pleasant work. It means that uh, 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 we, we cannot uh, eliminate the stresses at all, but uh, we can reduce uh, to, to some uh, level. Uh, that's why uh, they should analyze uh, different stresses at each hierarchical level, and uh, then they should discover uh, uh, the mitigating strategies. Well, uh, specifically speaking, uh, the, uh, as we already um, uh, seen in the uh, framework and also in uh, negative and significant effect or challenge rises on employee performance and positive and significant effect or challenge rises on burnouts. Uh, that's why uh, uh, these uh, challenge rises uh, lead to negative outcomes or adverse effects. Uh, that's why um, uh, uh, the banks should view talent stresses from the stressful perspectives, uh, which leads to the negative feeling and detriment behavior in the workplace. Uh, so they should uh, revise workload, work pressure, and time limitation for the achieved reasonable time frame. Uh, because um, our, our pressure to complete uh, the task uh, urgently uh, makes them uh, uh, employees uh, feel stressed, uh, then uh, the, the, the bank should make sure the appropriate threat levels uh, in the workplace. Uh, to be specific, uh, to another available hindrance stresses, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, let me uh, show the effect of hindrance stresses. Uh, uh, we, we, we all uh, already uh, know that the negative and insignificant effect of hindrance stresses are by motivation, uh, but positive and significant effect of hindrance stresses on burnout, it is consistent with the previous studies uh, uh, as shown in my literature. Uh, so uh, when employees feel burnout, they will uh, suffer physiological, psychological, and behavioral symptoms in the workplace uh, that might be disruptive uh, in the work, uh, in the bank operations. Uh, that's why uh, banks uh, management should consider their bank management system, politics, and constitution of responsibilities. Uh, in addition, uh, they should transform in effective practices so that uh, bank employees show positive work behavior. Uh, that's the uh, end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, thank you for, uh, for your patience for our weak internet connection. Uh, 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 very welcome uh, from your suggestions and comments. Uh, thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. And we have one more presentation, so don't leave. <laughs> so next presentation is about uh, challenges of online teaching in, um, oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, next, next presentation is analysis of public debate implication for economic growth rate for Myanmar from Prof. No, Professor Dida Hutu. So I share his uh, recorder videos. Hello, everybody. Very good day. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Dida Chu, Director of the Mithila University of Economics. Today, I will present about my paper, Analysis of Public Debt, Implications for Economic Growth Rate of Lima. This study organized into five sections. Section one concerns introduction. Section two is the literature review. Section three is overview of the Myanmar economy. And section four is empirical analysis of government public debts on economic growth rate. And section five is conclusions and suggestion. Country in the world have public debts after global economic crisis of 2008, even in the developed country. Public debt, including domestic and external debt, positively or negatively affect the economy of a country. This indicates that it stimulates or hampers the economic growth of the country. Many studies found that public debt adversely affects the economic growth of a country. Government in every country, therefore, endeavor to achieve both sustainable economic growth and reductions in public debt through microeconomic instruments such as fiscal and monetary policy. Government made at most effort to gain sustainable high economic growth without increasing any debt. Concern over increasing public debt reflects the detrimental effect on economic growth. Our research problem is the government of Myanmar also faces domestic and external debt due to budget deficit. Budget deficit tend to increase in government public debt. So the research problem is whether or not public debt negatively or positively affect the economic growth rate of Myanmar. According to the research problem, the objective of the study is to examine how public debt affect the economic growth rate of Myanmar. Now let me present about the literature review on relationships between public debts and economic growth. Every country has common such microeconomic objectives, high level of both price stability and low level of unemployment. Instability of microeconomic environment, including fluctuations of output growth, inflation tends to affect the public debt in the country. According to the Keynesian economic thought, government debt is required for improving the economy since the government debt is the nature of the consequence of government expenditure. Government debt depends on government size of the country, measured by government spending. Government borrowing decision is thus influenced by government expenditure in order to support the public infrastructure. An increase in government spending has a positive effect on GDP due to the multiplier effect. This leads to an increase in saving, an increase in investment, an increase in demand for money, which stimulate the economy. This indicates that increase in consumption has positive effect on economic behavior that generate investment, employment, and profitability according to the Keynesian theory. The increase in government expenditure thus reflect the rising public debts. Public debt also negatively affect the economic growth of a country. This means that government debt seems to be disadvantaged whenever government use as capital current expenditure. Government use it as capital expenditure, government debt seems to be advantaged. Rising public debts to GDP ratio cause the current to Brazil, currency depreciations and the high inflation. Consequence is low down economic growth. Rising public debt might increase in private interest rate and result in decrease in private investment. Causes of decreasing GDP growth is the result of continuous increase in debts to GDP ratio in the long term. If the economic fluctuations need to be smoothed out in the long term, debt to GDP ratio should be temporary. We consider the trade growth rate. It is also influenced on the public debt because trade growth is positively influenced on the public debt due to the fact that Country began more transparent and 
more attractive to influence the foreign direct investment, trade growth is regarded as proxies for the openness of the country. We consider the foreign direct investment. It is also regarded as country ability to attract more foreign investment. The more it flows of foreign direct investment into a country, the less burden on government expanded there for its needed investment, such as public infrastructure. According to the population growth rate, it is considered as controversial in a country. Increase in population growth rate affect the government expenditure and thus leading to fiscal deficit in a country. Social welfare, such as social safety net, also influence a fiscal balance because it's partially influenced financed by the government revenue. According to the borough, social safety net exists as a rule as an automatic stabilizer in response to increasing unemployment rate. We consider the tax. If a country has tax fluctuations, government relies on debt in order to avoid distortions tax fluctuation. Due to this reason, government debt can increase to avoid inflation of tax. We consider the inflation. Inflation also influences on the macroeconomics imbalance. Public debt increases the general price level in consumer price index. This in turn leads to rising inflation. Rising public debt might lead to a country become more and stable and thus leading to lower economic growth. So you can see the figure which shows the GDP growth rate of Myanmar. According to this figure, we can see the government revenue, expenditure, and the fiscal balance of Myanmar. So we can see the model specification. This equation is the model specifications for this study. In this study, the growth rate of GDP is designated as a demand variables, and the other main variables such as GDP per capita, public debt, populations, growth rate, unemployment rate, trade growth rate, FDI, consumer price index, government revenues and government expenditure, consumptions and the investment as independent variable. The study attempts to make heteroscedasticity of the tax. This is an empirical result. According to the empirical results, the trade growth and the government revenues are found as positively significant with economic growth rate of Myanmar. According to the result of the trade growth rate, the trade growth rate is the biggest positive effect on economic growth rate on Myanmar. 1% increase in trade growth rate leads to an increase in GDP growth rate by 91.8%. This trade growth rate is significant at 1% level of significance. Trade growth rate is regarded as a proxy for the openness of the country. This indicates that country became more open and consequently it leads to more attractive to inflows of foreign direct investment. It is confirmed that inflows of foreign direct investment has been increasing trend since the year 2010. Increased inflows of foreign direct investment reflects country ability to attract more foreign direct investment. The more inflows of foreign direct investment into the country, the less burden on government public debt, especially external debt. The relationships between trade growth rate and GDP growth rate are consistent with economic theory. According to the result of the public debt, public debt is negative relationships with economic growth rate on Myanmar. This means that 1% increase in receipt of public debt leads to decrease in economic growth rate by 0.0037%. Public debt has less contributed to economic growth rate of country. Receipt of the public debt might be used in any protective sector that discourages the economic growth rate of Myanmar. If the public debt is effectively used in the productive sector, it will accumulate capital and thus leading to stimulating economic growth rate of Myanmar. Government should channel borrow funds to diversifications and expansions, thereby leading to stimulating long-term economic growth. Government has ability to pay its debts when maturity date is due. According to the result of the government revenue, we can see the government revenue has positive significant with GDP growth rate on more than 5% level of significance. This means that 1% increase in government revenue leads to an increase in GDP growth rate. Although the government revenue is positive relationships with GDP growth rate, it cannot greatly contribute to country GDP. This means that government needs to manage to increase government revenue through expansions in the tax base. According to the result of the model, the recommendations are as follows. Government should emphasize to increase tax revenue as the best options to reduce the public debt. Government should reinforce tax payer not to avoid the paying tax 
ensure the government transparency on the use of the tax money to the public and thereby leading to strengthening public confidence. Government should justify their expenditure in order to increase the share of the development expenditure and promote effort for domestic revenue mobilization. Public debt ought to be used in a more productive manner and thereby leading to achieving further productivity gain in the expansions and expenditures of capital projects. Government should attract domestic and foreign direct investment through creating an open environment and policy to reduce the burden of government public debt. So the government should emphasize on trade policy that facilitate the export promotion, which in turn lead to export earnings and the government revenues, and thereby leading to faster economic growth rate of Myanmar. That is all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, our session is finished. So various child person who has disappeared. <laughs> okay, let me. <laughs> yeah, I'm so miss him. <laughs> so I understand. Okay. Uh, so our four presentation is presenter is finishing our uh, section is the first one is challenge of online teaching in Myanmar in Malika University and second presenter talk about the cap capacity building and the manager support one employee and third presenter talk about challenge in hydrants stressor of employees and last one is relationship between public debate and the economic growth so it is i think it is very suitable in myanmar situation right <laughs> so yeah uh, yes yeah, I think so. Uh, so we finishing our session and I hope everyone is goes well and uh, hopefully see you soon in Myanmar or in Korea. <laughs> okay, see you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right. So we end of our session. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. See you. See you soon.